The current superior general of the Jesuits met with the press in Rome to recall his predecessor, Aldolfo Nicolás, who died in Tokyo on May 20th. He remembered him as a person who wore himself out serving others. Aldolfo Nicolás and Arturo Sosa have known each other since 1995 and have worked closely since 2008. In 2014, he moved from Venezuela to... Él estaba muy emocionado porque... He was very excited because it was a... Well, that's one side of the story. <laughs> Now the Jesuits, of course, are the ones who behind the scenes control many things. This is the general perspective of the superior general of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. But there's also another side. <laughs> it, it, uh, friends, I cannot believe this man is still his sermons are still on YouTube. I'm, 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 a little, I'm a Paul because I had, I had videos taken down for the most simplest stuff. And I can't believe Walter Veith series, Total Onslaught, it is still on YouTube. Friends, if you want to be blown away, you want to be shocked, you want to be disturbed, go listen to this. And I know a lot of you who watch this channel, you probably already did. <laughs> But some of you that are new, I'm telling you, go to Amazing Discoveries on YouTube. Find the, the total onslaught. Walter Vife. My Lord, my God. You know, it's one thing you, you find someone completely unhinged, you know, saying things like um, Alex Jones. You just get that through your stinking traitorous heads. Excuse me, I apologize. We have a lot of Christian affiliates. I am a Christian, but I will stomp your head in if you start a fight with me, you thug scum. Anyways, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Bunch of cowards. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to control myself right now. She is a demon damned to hell. He says a number of things that were true, although he didn't say it the right way. He did have evidence, but the attitude wasn't well fit. And a lot of what he said was also extreme. He went too far and said too much, right? He added too much to the, con to, to the content. What you get with this guy, Walter Weif, and listen, I've gone through this series at least six years ago. I need to go back. I am so serious. I'm going to go back sit down, take some notes, take some screenshots, save them in my archives. The reason I want to do that again is because this is not going to remain online forever. Like there is no way this stuff, this brother's talking about here is going to remain on, on the internet forever. Knowing what I know now with censorship, with what's been going on online, it won't be long. Before these, this, listen, this entire YouTube channel could be banned unless the Lord, mm, I, 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 unless God allows. Let's be honest. You want to be blown away? We're going to listen to a portion of, you, you heard, right? You heard it at the start of this video, right? You heard about, you know, Arturo Soto, right? Sosa what is the superior general of the society of Jesus? And you heard the embellishment and the beauty and the calmness and the loving side of the thing. Until you listen to this guy. <laughs> and I got some books in my library that I, I don't even like to share with people. When I read them, I get a little sick because it goes into the history of some of the things that these people have done the beginning of the Jesuit move, the, the, the society of Jesus, how it came about, what they, what they did. I mean, oh. anyway, so total onslaught. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video for you. Listen, we're going into some very, very troubling waters right now. The secret behind secret societies. Obviously the secret behind secret societies is a secret that people don't want to spread abroad. Walter Weif at the start of the video says, listen, I'm just reading. 
you don't have to have an issue with me. If you have a problem with me, listen, go find the people who wrote these books, who quoted these books, and take it up with them because I'm just reading from their literatures. Okay, so which I totally respect that. Friends, are you ready to be blown away, disturbed? Maybe even go hide in a corner for a little bit? When you watch stuff like this, it makes you think about the world differently. It makes you, it helps you to see, whoa, is there anything left to be trusted in this world? That's one question. Number two, yo, what are we fighting for? <laughs> but we still got to fight. But you, it does make you wonder like, oh my Lord. But number three, one thing that it really did for me is, yo, we need the Lord. We need Jesus. We need his help. We need to rely on the Lord. Last but not least, there's nothing here to go and lose our salvation over. Like, it's not worth it, friends. Once you know who is working behind the scene, who's making things happen, sometimes I wonder, like, man, Lord, you, you allow these, these, these men to prosper. Like, what do the wicked prosper? But the Lord, in his love, and also in his ultimate plan, he allows certain things to go on, but you can tell he's working in the midst of it all. But I was like, golly, this is terrible. Anyway, friends, let's get to the video. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Let's dial in. Who behind the scenes control many things. They were founded on two behinds. Now the Jesuits, of course, are the ones who behind the scenes control many things. They were founded on the 15th of August, 1534 by Ignatius Loyola and were sanctioned by the Pope on the 27th of September, 1540. So they were created, as it were, to stand against the Reformation. They were designed to destroy the Reformation. Loyola wanted the order to be champions of Catholic unity and, uh, of course, submission to Christ's vicar, the Pope, was absolutely essential. Here you have the institution of Loyola's organization by the Pope uh, on this particular day. And there are some interesting analogies which we will find here. Here, for example, there is considerable analogy between Masonic and Jesuitic degrees. And the Jesuits also tread down the shoe and bear the knee because Ignatius Loyola thus presented himself at Rome and asked for the confirmation of the order. Now, who existed first? Freemasons or the Jesuits? The Jesuits existed first, of course. They were to obey as a corpse, peri de a cadaver. The reconstitutions repeat 500 times that one must see Christ in the person of the general. And even if God gave you a dog, you must obey him as though he were Jesus Christ himself. Loyola's statue in a Jesuit retreat, Loyola in vision, the Society of Jesus constituted in the chapel Notre Dame, Notre Mer, 1534, now the chapel of the Sacred Heart in Paris. Many, many occult encrustations, and this is the famous Jesuit oath that each Jesuit makes when he becomes a Jesuit. Now, it'll tell us something about the character of the Jesuits. There it says, I, and he fills in his name in the presence of God and all the saints and all these things, swear that his holiness, the Pope, is Christ's vice-regent and is the true and only head of the Catholic Universal Church, etc. It also says here, that this power was given by the Saviour, Jesus Christ. He has power to dispose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation and that they may safely be destroyed. So a Jesuit swears that if a government is not subject to Rome, it can be what? Destroyed. Mercy. <laughs> I further declare that uh, I will help and assist and advise all or any of His Holiness's agents mm. uh, wherever I shall be and do my utmost to extirpate the heretical Protestant mm -hmm. or liberal doctrines. Liberal doctrines are doctrines where you decide Free. what you believe. You take the liberty of making your own choice rather than allowing the Pope to do it for you. And that will be destroyed and all their pretended powers. <laughs> and that 
It doesn't matter where you send me in the world, I will obey. Crazy. And I promise that I will have no opinion of my own. I will obey like a corpse. And I will make war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to do to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth. I will spare neither sex, age, nor condition, and I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, bury alive these infamous heretics, Mercy. who rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, crush their infants' heads against the wall in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. Here's the thing. Historically, this has also been done. <laughs> that's what's crazy about it. Like, you would think these were just words on paper. Is this somebody trying to smear? But that's not really what it is, actually. When you check out the pages of history, these things were carried out. That's a pride, quite a nice Christian promise. Would you agree? <laughs> Very Christian promise. I don't think so. Did they do it? Well, the Valdenses, they smashed the children's heads against the rocks to make mm. the parents rescind. Mercy. In the Ottoman Empire, that's an interesting story, in Serbia and in uh, all those East Bloc countries where they occupied, they took the children, threw them in the air, and caught them on the ends of their bayonets. They were, they were nice people. Mm -hmm. Now you will say, that was Islam, that wasn't Jesuits? Well, debatable. We'll talk about it another <laughs> time. And uh, if I cannot do it openly, I will do it secretly. So that is what a Jesuit swears. What I love about Walter Weiss is the attitude that he has the whole time. Like he's like so mellow and laid back and cool and kind with it. He's almost like, did you just say that? <laughs> and acted like uh, that's what, and I think that's why he hasn't been canceled yet. Is <laughs> because he he's maintained a Christian behavior the, the whole time. That's what's that's what's really amazing to watch. This is the famous Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, the most prestigious Catholic university in the world. The Jesuits, in all their enclaves, have their figures in caves. Now, in paganism, all the deities come out of the cave, and they have the letters IHS, which actually stand for Isis Horus Set, which is the Egyptian trinity. They, of course, still say it means Jesus hominum salvator, Jesus the savior of men, but it doesn't. It means IHS, Isis Horus Set. And their symbol is the triangle with the all-seeing eye in it for this deity. They also use the pillar, uh, the stella, if you like. They have the symbol of the triangle with the eye in a circle, which is also the symbol used in the New Age movement. And we saw that Gary Carr says that Freemasonry controls the New Age movement and the Jesuits control the Freemasonry, or created it. This is the uh, University of the Jesuits in Prague. On top of it they have Atlas, not Jesus Christ. If you go to a more modern Jesuit enclave, like this one in Germany, I visited this. I'm quite cheeky sometimes, there I am and took a picture, and inside they have this picture of Christ. This is not Christ, this is Atlas, holding the world on top of his shoulders, disguised. They have these symbols up against the wall. There, this symbol is the symbol of Hermes. If you take away uh, the cross, then you have the symbol of Isis. This is paganism at its best. And these symbols over here, Oh, nothing. Here it is. Jesuit Kirche, when it was built, etc. And their symbolism, Maria, the M is the Masonic M, the triangle, Ria, the goddess. Here is a, a church in Germany, a cathedral. Inside you will see the circle with a cross in it, the crossed swords, symbol of all symbols used also in Freemasonry. Now if you go back to ancient Assyria, that was a very prominent cross. It was the Maltese cross. It comes from ancient paganism. They have the symbols of uh, the, the star over here, two stars one over the other, or two crosses one over the other. They have the compass, they have the moon with a disc in it, or a star in it, which is the symbol that Islam uses, for example. They have the solar calendar and the triple crown. All of these are used by the papacy. Upside down crosses represent victory over Christ, hammers and compasses and sickles. These are symbols that are prevalent in the world. There's Jesus standing above the skull and crossbones, which is a symbol of Jupiter, the god Jupiter. 
who is a symbol of course, who is Lucifer. Upside down crosses again. This is a very uh, important cathedral in Europe, in Germany, where all the political leaders come together. If you go there, you will have Janus, the two-headed one. And then you have the statue so-called of David. But of course it isn't David, it is the god Pan, because he has a pan flute in his hand. And David didn't play a pan flute. So I went to look for the dark side of Pan, because there's a light side and a dark side, and I found them, there he is, the hoofed one in the same cathedral. So they hide their occult symbolism. If you enter into the hallway, you find this over here, this is the god Anubis. It's got nothing to do with Christianity. There you have him as well, plus you have the phoenix rising from the ashes, plus you have the symbol of Jupiter, and a whole host of other symbols over there, and in their side chapel, you have all the signs of the zodiac serving the various deities like Mars and Aquarius, etc. And the doorknob is a yin yang. This has nothing to do with Christianity. They use the symbol of the compass and uh, Jupiter and the PX symbol over there, which you will find in virtually every single Christian denomination upon the face of the earth. The phoenix rising from the ashes the peacock, all symbols of Lucifer. Here you have the PX with a circle with a dot in it, and you say to yourself, but isn't that a symbol of Christianity? No, this is a symbol of Horus. This has got nothing to do with Christianity. They use pine cones. Let's ask Albert Mackey, 33 degree Freemason, to tell us what the symbol means. The point within the circle is an interesting and important symbol in Freemasonry. The symbol is really a beautiful but somewhat obtrusive solution to the old sun worship and introduces us for the first time to that modification of it among the ancients, the worship of the phallus. So it's a pretty filthy symbol at that. It deals with male organs. Wow. So that comes from the horse's mouth. So that's what it means. Now what's the PX mean? Let's go to the best Masonic source in the world, Morals and Dogma, page 292. And in case you don't believe me, I photocopied it so that you can see it. There you can see the symbol. Can you see that? It is the staff of Osiris on the Medal of Constantinopolis, in hoc signat eris, whatever the inscriptions. And then some other interesting things. So this is the staff of Osiris. And then it goes through the mystic Tau and the crosses and the uh, stars of David. And then he uses this one as well. Interesting symbol. He says the vestment of the priest of Horus were covered with these crosses. That's a Maltese cross. Remember that I showed it to you on the Assyrian king? Now who wears that on his vestments? Well, let's have a look. Oops, there it is. Who's wearing it? The Pope is wearing it. So what is he? He, said, he must oops. be the priest of Horus. He said, oops, there it is. <laughs> oh, the connection is irrefutable. Irrefutable. This is a strong evidence, boy. So to the outside world, it seems like Christianity, but to the inner circle, it's occultism. On the floor of the, the cathedral in London, you have the tricale, which is the triple yang, ling yang. And what does that mean? Well, let's go and ask the sources themselves. Celtic version of the yin yang. That's what it is. The tricale, the sea, good luck, cauldron, Celtic goddess, the goddess of wisdom and witchcraft. Who was enthroned in the French Revolution? Goddess of reason, witchcraft, reason, all these things, same deity. On the floor of the same cathedral you find the mystic Tao. What does the Tao represent? Let's ask another mason, Ward. He says it's the symbol of the male creative side of the deity. Sign language of the mysteries. So again, it has a sexual connotation. What's it doing on the floor of a cathedral? So the Jesuits are the heirs of the occult religion and they control the world through their agencies. They stand in the background, create sub-organizations, and everybody thinks they are not active. Let's ask them themselves what they believe. Here is the history of the general of the Society of Jesus. These are all the generals starting with Ignatius Loyola. They're all listed down there. We don't have to go through them all. All the way through to uh, the present one that rules now, 
whose name is Peter Hans Kolvenbach. Nice German name. It's interesting that the Germans are very prominent in this. Peter Hans Kolvenbach is the head of the, of the Jesuits. Cardinal Ratzinger, another German, is the head of the Inquisition. They seem to be pretty much in control. What does he look like? There he is. Peter Hans Kolvenbach. You're looking probably at one of the mightiest men on the earth today, if not the mightiest. He's the Black Pope. Here you have the cave of Loyola. Here you have George W. Bush and the Pope uh, in audience with each other. And they don't do anything in s by chance. They just happen to do this exactly under that picture I showed you where Loyola receives his commission from the Pope. Now, the ceremony of induction and the extreme oath of the Jesuits. Library of Congress, catalog card, there it is. You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces and states that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous cultivating the art and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace, to take sides with the combatants and to act uh, secretly in concert with your brother Jesuit, who might be engaged on the other side. <laughs> Infiltration. <laughs> this stuff is not just in a political circle, it's in churches, it's in everything. It's, it's scary, man. It's scary when you think about it, but thank God that God is bigger than man openly opposed to that with which you might be connected, only that the church may be the gainer in the end, in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace, and that the end justifies the means. Whoa! This is Hegelian science. Two opposing viewpoints, dialectic thinking. You war the one with the other, and you rub them up until nothing is left. It's called Thesis, antithesis, and the resultant clash brings synthesis, that which you want. Now note that the Jesuit can be very active on the one side, but he can be equally active on the other side. So this is all a process whereby they wish to attain things. The Thirty Year War. Now what was that about? The aim and the object was that that war should in truth become a war of annihilation. Besides, was it possible for them to allow peace to be concluded with countries whose rebellious governments had issued a law ruling that no Jesuit should ever again dare to show his face? Do you know that the Jesuits were thrown out of virtually all countries, including Catholic ones, because they were so divisive? Catholic kings couldn't even take the Jesuits and threw them out. If a Catholic king dared to throw out a Jesuit, that country was destroyed, Catholic or not, and the Jesuits are back. You can take your bottom dollar for that. So, the frightful responsibility for this terrible Thirty Years' War must rest upon the Emperor Ferdinand II and his teachers, rulers, and bosom friends, the sons of Loyola. Every single thing I'm saying is a quote. Popery, an enemy to civil religious liberty. In 1550, Pope Julius declared his claim to universal temporal political power, evidenced by a new coin he issued, its motto, having read, the nation and kingdom that will not serve me shall perish. Now please note that this is a Roman Catholic statement, that the nation and the kingdom that does not serve the papacy will perish. What does that mean in terms of Protestant countries then? Are they going to be in trouble, yes or no? I would say, yes, they will be in trouble. Thomas Aquinas, the great um, philosopher of the Roman Catholic Church, said, The Pope, by divine right, has spiritual and temporal power as supreme king of the world. The Pope of Rome, as head of the papal government, claims absolute sovereignty and supremacy over all the governments of the earth. All the governments. All these quotes are highly potent quotes. There is nothing mediocre in these quotes, and they come from the highest, highest sources. 
The right of deposing kings is, is inherent in the supreme power sovereignty which the Pope says vice regent of Christ exercise over all Christian nations. Cardinal Henry Manning, 1892, he was Archbishop of, Man Man of Westminster. So, he is in control of all nations of the world. Now it's interesting that uh, the Bible tells us that these words were put on the Christ's uh, cross at the cru crucifixion. Jesus of Nazareth the King of the Jews. You read that in John 19, 19. But the Roman Catholic crucifix has the words Inri written on it. Now, if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, it means Jesus Nazarenus Rex Euderum. But in the extreme oath of the Jesuits, Inri means something totally different. It means Iustum Necare Reges Impios, which means it is just to exterminate or annihilate impious or heretical kings, governments, or rulers. That's an interesting point. Now, another thing that they want to do is destroy Protestantism. We cherish at the bottom of our hearts this principle that whatever does not unite with us must be annihilated. And we hold ourselves ready to make as soon as we shall have the means an energetic application of these principles. Protestantism is already already wearing out and sinking to decay. Yes, we are destined to insult its last agonies, Mercy. to march over its broken skeleton and scattered bones. Oh, let us hasten this dissolution by our strong and united efforts. That's the goal. So the secret plan by the... Um, I can't read that. Quoted from what? Vatican Assassins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that. Yeah, window by the house of my friends. Yeah, I don't know. I'm familiar with that. Uh, that's this difficult to listen to. That's the ultimate plan. I would like to know what they have to say in response to some of this stuff. They just all just stay quiet, hoping that it goes away. Then already they wrote, Protestantism is becoming decomposed. And we are gaining men of note. This is extracts from the secret plan. Uh, those are the worst of the Catholics, the Inquisitors, the Jesuits. They are simply the Romish army for the earthly sovereignty of the world in the future with the pontiff of Rome for emperor. Something like a universal serfdom with them as master is what is being planned. That's all they stand for. They don't even believe in God, perhaps, the brothers Karmasov. Uh, all these quotes. The general of the Jesuits insists on being master sovereign over sovereigns. Wherever the Jesuits are admitted, they will be master, cost what it may. The society is by nature dictatorial, and therefore it is the irreconcilable enemy of all constituted authority. Fifty years in the Church of Rome, written by Father Chenneking. Ignatius Loyola says himself, the power of the general be, will be so unlimited that should he deem it necessary for the honor of God, he shall even be able to send back or in another direction those who have come direct from the popes. So this is a powerful order. Friedrich von Hartenberg said, never before in the course of the world's history has such a society appeared. The old Roman Senate itself did not lay schemes for world domination with greater certainty of success. They want world dominion, with the Pope enthroned as the universal ruler. The Roman Catholic Lafayette said, It is my opinion that it is that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed, it will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests, for they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe. These are prominent people speaking. Morse, he's the founder of the Morse Code, the inventor of the Morse Code. He said, and who are these agents? They are for the most part Jesuits an ecclesiastical order, order proverbial through the world for cunning duplicity and total want of moral principle, an order so skilled in all the arts of deception that even in Catholic countries, in Italy itself, it became intolerable and the people required its suppression. That's 
another prominent man, Archduke Maximal Francis said, they have so constantly mixed themselves up in the court and state intrigues that they must in justice be reproached with striving of the universal dominion. And we could go on and on and on. This is a very interesting one. This is Michelangelo Tamburni, 1720. This is the Jesuit of the general of the Jesuits, the general speaking to the Duke of Brancas, and he said the following. See, my lord, from this room, from this room I govern not only Paris, but China. Not only China, but the whole world without anyone knowing how it is managed. Wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. This is what the Jesuits themselves had to say. The Pope's confessor has to be a Jesuit. Mm. And the Pope himself has to come to a Jesuit to confess. Guys, this is just too much to work with. And again, the evidence is strong. I would like to know, like, how do you refute some of this stuff? I would like to hear, like, people who, or either Jesuits or any, you know, when you hear something like this and you see those quotations and those documents and those, like, the man is not just saying things. He's reading. He's just reading. Like, what do they say to respond to this? Like, I would like to hear their, 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 their excuses, their responses. Anyway, ah, this is tough to digest, man. It's a whole lot of meat to work with. But friends, this is where we are today. You know, the enemy has this plan. But the Bible says all things work together for good. In Proverbs, we are told that people will make preparation but God will have the final say in the detail. I'm giving you a paraphrased version of that. And I think we, even with the plan of the Jesuits and everything that they're doing, they've been very successful, by the way. And I don't think the Protestant world realize the level of enemy that's been behind them. And I think a lot of the confusion we see in Protestantism is their work. And a lot of what's happening in the world and some of the wars that we are seeing, I wouldn't say all of them, but a lot of them, they're behind it. And it's crazy when you when you re listen to this and you watch that video we watched earlier, you're like, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> you trying to deceive me here? Anyway, friends, I'm going to leave a link to the Total Onslaught series in the description of this video. Go and enjoy yourself. It gets crazy. You think this is bad. Wait till you go to 35 lessons of this. And I hope you got time. I hope you have patience. I hope you can sit still and study. This is not for the faint in heart. This is not for those who are weak spiritually. If you don't have a backbone, this is not for you. I'm so serious. This stuff right here is for people who know their God, who have faith in Jesus, who can, and who can go through this and see the picture and then get on their knees and say, Lord, have mercy on us. <laughs> like this is not for the average man. I will not recommend it for the average guy because it can drive you crazy. It can, it can make you depressed. It can break your heart, but it's true. It's true. And if it's truth, truth always does one thing well. Oh, he sets us free. <laughs> it sets us free. Yes, it will make you uncomfortable, but it will set you free. It will give you a new perspective, a new way of seeing life. <sighs> Powerful business. Go sit at the feet of Walter Weith. I would encourage you if you want to be blown away. Anyway, friends, much more could be said. I'm so glad. Like, no matter what the enemy has in mind to do, the Bible already said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Mm. What shall we say to these things? I can't watch something like this and not read the Bible. That's just too much. I got to get a Bible verse, man. This is stuff is depressing. What shall we say to these things? <clears throat> if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but deliver him for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 
Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is raised again. Who is even seated by the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord so tell your jesuit friends take this promises to the bank that's all i have to say link in the description below like and subscribe to the page click the bell icon for more i know you like my t-shirt you like what you see Go to the store. We have a merch. We have a store where you can go over there and show some love. There it is. There it is. Go over there and find something to put on. So that's what I'm wearing right now. Faith, family, and freedom. Check out this guy. <laughs> I don't pick the, I don't pick these guys. They, they, they're picked for me. Uh, anyway, friends. So check it out. Let me know if you find something you like. Uh, enjoy, enjoy what you put on, and and you know, just just have it your way. Go to the store. We have we have some stuff for women as well. So, ladies, hey, hey, there's something for you to put on. This is one of the best ways you can support the channel, because uh, YouTube is not fair. <laughs> just letting you know, I can tell you a whole lot of the reasons why this is so. But um, so one of the best ways to support content creators in the process, you gain something. So it's not just you supporting, but you also gain something of value for yourself. So I think this is a good look. You know what I'm saying? So kind of give a thick process. Anyway, friends, share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. If you enjoyed this reaction video, like or subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.